Hey, hi, hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, hope you're doing well, and uh, doing a list here of something I've been thinking about for a while, plotting on for a little bit. I figured that uh, no reason to wait on this any longer because uh, such a list is going to evolve over time anyway. I shouldn't sweat too much this idea of it being the most perfect list ever as soon as I drop it, as soon as I unleash it. And that is uh, who I feel are the 55 greatest rappers of all time. Now, I will also say this, this list is not tiered or oriented in any way other than alphabetical. However, everyone on this list I think is pretty significant artistically. You know, 55, when you think about the broader sense of hip hop, is quite the limitation. It leaves out a lot of artists. It does leave out a lot of voices. There are certainly artists who are not on this list who are great, but uh, this is a greatest list. And obviously, at the end of the day, this is my opinion. Um, I went into this list with a bit of a methodology. Uh, there are many out there like this where maybe what the person curating the whole thing is taking into account is just style, skill, technical ability. And that is something I took into account too, and something I think is important as well. But simultaneously, I also think catalog is super important. Uh, there are a lot of artists out there who do have a quality catalog, but uh, they may not have the most flash, the most skill, the most technical ability, because I don't think making a good song boils down simply to that, no matter what genre you're talking about. I tried to take into account relevancy to the genre, the culture, commercial success too. I think you will find that most of the artists here, or at least a great deal of them, check three of those boxes to some degree, but there are some names that have landed on this list where maybe they have a great catalog, maybe they have a lot of style and skill, but not the most commercial success. Maybe they have commercial success, maybe they have a lot of style and skill, but maybe they don't have the greatest catalog in the world. So, you know, a bit of a mix depending on who we're talking about, but uh, I don't think missing one of those things or having less of one of those things to uh, another artist comparatively uh, should necessarily, you know, knock you entirely off of the possibility of being on such a list. So uh, those are my thoughts. That was my mentality going into this. You know what I'm about to present to you. Quickly, before I get into that, I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, good people over at The Ridge. They make these awesome, nifty, metal-plated, minimalist wallets that fit nicely in your front pocket. Hit up that link down below. Get 10% off of your order and uh, use promo code MELON. All right. 55 greatest rappers, alphabetical order. Let's do it. Scrolling down. Who are we going to see first? All right. We have some names over here. Tupac, one of the greatest West Coast rappers, kind of goes without saying, you know, his reputation is these or him, multiple classics under his belt, lots of style, lots of hits, lots of impact, just sort of the total package in a lot of respects. Uh, Aesop Rock, comparatively, not as commercially successful, but uh, well known to those who are aware of him as being one of the most uh, verbose and creative lyricists out there. I think uh, there's actually been a uh, counts done of uh, which rappers have the largest uh, vocabulary or, you know, which rappers apply the largest vocabulary to their songs. And it is far and away Aesop Rock, his, uh, uh, you know, sort of encyclopedia dictionary knowledge of, uh, of English is insane. And the way he applies it into his music is quite unique. And he has a solid discography too. So, uh, you know, and, and a very strong cult following as well. So, you know, not to say the guy has been uh, totally unsuccessful or anything. Andre 3000, one half of Outkast, obviously incredibly talented, great flows, commercial success, creative to the core, and uh, top-notch lyricist as well. Biggie, Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G., uh, many would say the king of New York, classics under his belt, uh, amazing songs, great performance style, great flow, instantly recognizable voice, and uh, influenced many, many, many who came after him. Next on this list, I obviously have Big Boy not coming too far after Andre. Uh, I think he deserves to be on this list as well. I mean, sure, we all love Andre 3000, but a lot of those talents, what we love about him is attributed to Outkast's music in which Big Boy is no slouch, comes through with great lyrical gems, 
fantastic song and hook ideas, amazing flows, good vocal tone and personality as well. I mean, I don't think the guy would consistently on record be up against uh, someone who many perceive to be one of the goats if he didn't also have a huge amount of talent himself. Uh, he sounds great on those Outcast records, and he sounds great out of the context of Outcast too. Um, he's a guy who can certainly hold his own inside and outside of that duo. I think he is uh, very well deserving of a spot on this list. Next, Big Daddy Kane. We have some more names rolling up. Uh, one of the rawest rappers to ever come out of New York. Uh, one of the rawest rappers of the 80s, too. I mean, some of the stuff that this guy was doing uh, in the late 80s on record was bestial, just like going on and on and on and on and just like a machine, just a total machine. And, um, you know, his his almost, uh, you could say, Lothario type aesthetic that he would uh, apply to a lot of his uh, uh, promo stuff, his album covers, just the way he presented himself and promoted himself was certainly influential too. Billy Woods coming in after that, uh, probably the most underrated name in this list. I think one of the most creative, unique, and enigmatic rappers to come out of the East Coast. Mega solid catalog, strong cult following, um, what he's done between his solo stuff, Super Cron, also, um, Arm and Hammer, the duo that he's in with Elucid, uh, all of that has been insanely good, prolific, creative. Uh, I think in a lot of respects, Billy Woods is the total package. When you're talking about abstract hip hop, I think he's one of the best modern names out there. Black Thought of The Roots, uh, mega spitter, awesome lyricist, just beast of a voice too. And uh, obviously the, the vocal leader, the lead MC of uh, the, the, the hip hop band of note. Uh, so there's, there's not really uh, much more that can be said beyond that. I think his uh, talent speaks for itself. His impact speaks for itself. And the fact that he's been able to maintain such an immense amount of relevance uh, all this time is impressive and important. Uh, Danny Brown, one of the best Detroit rappers out there, a mega eccentric style, great catalog too. Um, he had some commercial success as well, and I think he could have had more if he uh, uh, sort of sold his soul at the point where it seemed opportune, but instead he has kind of chosen, um, you know, more, uh, uh, I guess, creative and true to his self route, which uh, I greatly admire and appreciate, and I think his music has... Uh, uh, stayed fantastic and has stayed uh, engaging and entertaining as a result of that. You know, Danny Brown, uh, he is an impressive uh, uh, spitter, and he's also got uh, a pen game to boot. And uh, you, you can't really say many people out there sound like Danny Brown or at least sounded like Danny Brown, you know, <laughs> by the time he dropped. You, you can't really say that. Dude has a, a groundbreaking style and voice. Bun B, UGK, one of the best rappers out of the South, super smooth style, great catalog, uh, creative and legendary. Uh, you know, not much else to say beyond that. Uh, Busta Rhymes, one of the flashiest, most creative and, um, you know, versatile rappers out of New York. People talk technical ability and Busta Rhymes was really doing a lot of head spinning shit back in the day before a lot of people were like he just had a level of skill that you know he continued to hone and you know while he may not have the best catalog of a lot of people out there you can't really deny that he has been uh influential to many especially those who care about flow care about lyricism care about you know sort of the the technical proficiencies of rapping check out a lot of his early features, check out his debut, check out a lot of his big singles. He has uh, some classic shit in the 90s that, uh, you know, should not go ignored. Um, Chuck D, Public Enemy, one of the greatest voices in hip hop, a revolutionary lyricist, great energy, unique style and tone. I think the Public Enemy catalog too speaks for itself, uh, not only in terms of what he and uh, Flava Flav presented, you know, vocally and lyrically, but also, uh, you know, being as creative on the production end as uh, Public Enemy was back in the day with the Bomb Squad. Common, one of the most conscious, forward-thinking, and uh, significant rappers to come out of Chicago. A class act, 
great catalog, unique voice, um, perceptive artist, and uh, has maintained as much relevancy as he has over this time because of those talents and because of those abilities. So a shout out to him, certainly. Uh, David Diggs. Fantastic West Coast rapper of the group Clipping, and uh, many of you may also know him from the uh, the the Broadway production Hamilton. You know the hip hop theater crossover, which obviously you know he did. He didn't create it. He didn't write it, but he plays a central role in that. Um, you know production, and uh, and obviously I think is uh, you know historically significant for that reason as well. I mean, he's kind of a, you know, a shining star in that whole thing. Uh, but also, you know, it, it has to be kind of a acknowledged and respected um, what he and Clipping have brought in terms of uh, pushing the envelope on the end of noise hip hop, industrial hip hop, experimental conceptual hip hop as well. Dude's ability to flow is insane. Uh, Clipping just dropped a track where he's just like spitting in seven time like it's nothing. His storytelling abilities are incredible for anybody who values that too. The dude has just uh, just everything you, you know, he's, if, if rap were an RPG, like all of his <laughs> attributes would be boosted to insane levels, like the technical skill, the lyricism, like the cleanliness of his delivery too, and his ability to, again, like, uh, deliver topics, deliver concepts that have so many layers to them. If you are unaware of Diggs' work, unaware of clipping, unaware of what he's done in Hamilton, please make yourself aware because I think he's one of the uh, best modern talents out there. Uh, next, we have Del the Funky Homo Sapien. One of the greatest West Coast rappers out there, if you're talking abstract and conscious hip-hop, sharp voice, great flows, uh, stellar lyrical abilities too, great catalog. Also, what he did with Deltron 3030 is uh, worth noting. And it's also worth questioning, considering that they broke out the gate with... Um, you know, uh, Clint Eastwood, would Gorillaz even be as relevant a musical venture as it is today, if not for that Del the Funky Homo Sapien feature? Yeah, it's it's really worth wondering. You know, this guy has had, um, you know, not the largest amount of name recognition in the industry, uh, but he has had huge impacts here and there that often, I think, go uh, overlooked a little bit. Dizzy Rascal, uh, what he did for UK hip hop and I think putting grime on the map in the way that he did in the 2000s is most definitely unignorable and um, should be uh, uh, praised and, and lauded. So a uh, shout out to him. He's certainly a unique voice and talent. Um, Drake, Drizzy. I mean, you guys know on this channel that I'm not necessarily the, the biggest Drake uh, fan in the world. He's had, you know, records and tracks that I like quite a bit, some that I don't. But, uh, you know, I can't deny the fact that um, Drake does have a respectable style. And Drake does have uh, uh, a lot of credibility artistically. And um, Drake also, I think, is the most dominant and relevant hip hop artist of the 2010s. And I think he has played a very central role to bringing the genre to the commercial zenith that it's at currently. Obviously, he's not the only rapper of the modern age who's had, you know, mainstream moments. I'm not trying to say that. Next, we have Eminem you know, known as the largest selling rapper of all time and uh, major commercial peaks in the 2000s. I loved his stuff back in the day when I was a kid. I remember, uh, <clears throat> I think, being in eighth grade when the Slim Shady LP came out and the My Name Is video came out and just loving how, um, I, you know, being a hip hop fan up until that point, it was interesting to sort of see how edgy and cartoony and weird and um, I guess silly his music was while also being pretty dark and serious. I mean, as badly as some of Eminem's stuff has aged over the years, I uh, can't really deny that that was certainly influential to a lot of the dark and tongue in cheek and strange avenues that a lot of rappers are going down these days in their own way. So, you know, Eminem has his stuff um, pretty proven to have the most shelf life, especially those weaker records, deeper into his discography. Um, no, I mean, many people, I think it's uh, pretty well known that his uh, discog is a little rough at this point um, in certain spots. But uh, having said that, uh, Eminem still huge impact, huge influence. I don't think hip hop would be the same without him. And uh, that's uh, reason enough to put him on this list. All right, LP, mega talented New York rapper, lyricist, and producer. What he's been able to accomplish between his own solo work with um, Cannibal Ox, 
with uh, Def Jux, and obviously Run the Jewels too. With uh, with Killer Mike is uh, certainly worthy of uh, putting him on this list as far as the underground goes. LP is uh, a rapper that you must know about. Eric Sermon. Great flows, great style, super smooth, lyrically talented too. EPMD, you know, uh, great records under their belt. So, uh, you know, Eric's contributions to hip hop in the time that he arrived, I think, are, uh, you know, uh, undeniable and, uh, you know, worthy of a placement on this list. You know, true, a true classic, a true classic. And, you know, one of the guys, uh, you know, who was there doing some of the best stuff that, you know, the genre had to offer when hip hop's blueprint was still forming in a lot of ways, you know, the blueprint wouldn't be what it is. I mean, he's one of a few artists here who you could say this about, but you know, the blueprint wouldn't be what it is, you know, and sort of, I think, uh, um, a lot of hip hop's ethos too, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, if you look at songs like The Crossover, for example, you know, I, I don't think would uh, be what it is without Eric kind of laying the groundwork for that and putting his own, you know, thoughts out there and them being as widely applied as they are. Freddie Gibbs, I think uh, somebody who didn't have necessarily the, the strongest start in the industry, but someone who has certainly come into his own as far as a, a versatile rapper and vocalist um, with great bars, great energy. A pretty relentless performer too. Um, over the years, the guy's really honed his craft and refined himself, and he has become a uh, uh, a machine, you know. And uh, and he's uh, kind of growing in terms of his catalog, becoming more impressive. Um, his uh, commercial, you know, peaks and connections are uh, getting bigger and bigger by the day. And uh, the guy just sort of seems unstoppable at this point. You know, he's he's at a point in his career where you might think his best days or his best records are behind him. But uh, for, for Freddie, it's it's really actually the opposite. You know, ever since he really kind of got um, juiced up with uh, with Pinata being one of the best uh, hip hop albums of the 2010s, um, you know, he's just kind of grown and grown from there. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes next. So uh, uh, Freddie, easily one of the best rappers of the past decade. And uh, I think if he continues on the streak that he's on, he'll be one of the best rappers of this decade, too. Gangsta Boo, 3-6 Mafia fame. I think one of the most significant uh, rappers of the South. Huge respect to her and her influence. And, uh, you know, what she did with 3-6 is uh, uh, undeniable. What she did with 3-6 is significant. Hopefully she continues to grow that solo catalog into the future too. Uh, we have Ghostface, Ghostface Killa, one of uh, at least a few members of the Wu-Tang Clan that you'll find on this list. I mean, his contributions to Wu-Tang alone, I think are worthy of putting him on this list. But as far as Wu-Tang members go, um, I think he has the uh, largest, most consistent catalog as well with many classics and influential records and contributions in that catalog. Whether you're talking about Fish Scale, whether you're talking about Supreme Clientele, whether you're talking about the stuff he's done with Raekwon too. So, you know, Ghostface Killa. I think one of the best rappers out of New York and, uh, you know, don't need to say anything more than that. Jizza as well. Excellent Wu-Tang contributions. Liquid Swords. I, I don't think you need to say much more. I think a lot of what you said about, you know, or what I said about Ghostface can apply to the Jizza as well. Uh, Miss Lauren Hill. Miss Lauren Hill. Miss Education. Amazing record, classic record, fantastic ability to fuse multiple genres and just create uh, these great crossovers and and hit commercial success with it too. Incredible commercial success, and uh, not to downplay the stuff that she did with the Fugees too, because I think that's uh, uh, certainly counting when it comes to my decision to include her on this list. Ice Cube, N.W.A., obviously, great solo records, obviously. Um, huge impact, obviously, uh, ice cubes kind of had it all, you know, <laughs> uh, super recognizable voice, um, distinct lyrical style too. Um, and, uh, in, in versatile as well, you know, which I think is proven in his ability or was proven in his ability to write for, you know, his cohorts, uh, so effectively. So, you know, uh, uh, can't deny ice cubes, uh, talents, abilities, and influence Jay-Z, one of the kings of New York, one of the kings of uh, the bling era. So many people were trying to sound like Jay-Z in the 2000s. It was ridiculous. And on top of it, his ability to um, sort of turn hip hop into a venture and, and put people on super effectively. 
super effectively. I mean, there are multiple careers that would not be around today if it were not for Jay-Z. Multiple, you know, hip hop careers that you and I both care about pretty deeply. Catalog is impressive. Commercial success is impressive. Jay-Z is obviously a very respected lyricist as well. There's nothing really that, uh, uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the criteria that I was looking for in this list that Jay-Z really lacks. You know, Jay-Z kind of has it all. We have Juicy J as well, also of 3-6 Mafia fame, who uh, uh, has a pretty solid, uh, you know, solo catalog when it comes to singles and uh, uh, super recognizable... Um, you know, voice and style, a uh, huge impact on Southern hip hop, which um, has, you know, branched off into so many sounds and styles that are influential and huge today. Kanye West. Do I need to explain it? Kanye fucking West. <laughs> great catalog, great lyrical talent, you know, super unique style. Um, great producer too, if I didn't already say it. Kendrick Lamar, Mega talented, great catalog. Obviously, I gave uh, T Pab the uh, greatest record of the past decade, you know, accolade when I did my 2010s list. So, uh, yeah, you know, Kendrick Lamar, no reason he shouldn't be on this list. KRS One, one of the most progressive and groundbreaking rappers uh, from New York. Boogie Down Productions. You know, multiple solid solo records uh, under that umbrella, under the solo umbrella. Um, the way he's been able to fuse, you know, multiple genres as well um, across his uh, discography into the hip hop form has been really impressive, too. And uh, Guy is a very impressive, you know, public speaker as well, has like a lot of great ideas on philosophy, politics, um, you know, racial injustice. I mean, Karis one is a, uh, you know, a guru of uh you know, sorts. So, uh, uh, if you get into the guy's music also, uh, get into a lot of the stuff he puts out there in terms of, you know, his ideas on the world and, and so on and so forth, you know, because he's a, he's a great mind. LL Cool J, I think one of the most, uh, commercially significant rappers of the eighties. Um, I, I don't know if the genre would be quite what it is or where it is without LL Cool J, even though historically a lot of that has been kind of ignored and overlooked because, uh, you know, he, he is, he hasn't exactly, stayed mega relevant uh, throughout the entirety of the genre, you know, at least in the music lane, because he went into acting in the way that he did and was successful in that venture too. But, um, you know, LL Cool J has a lot of like super significant early records. Moving on from there, Lil B, one of the biggest and most groundbreaking and influential outsider rappers the genre has ever had. Um, I think uh, it's really worth asking, would the current internet-based landscape of hip-hop look the same if not for someone like Lil B revolutionizing, you know, mixtapes, revolutionizing freestyles, revolutionizing music videos and online promotion in the way that he has. Big respect uh, to Lil B for kind of, um, you know, really uh, uh, showing a new way, you know, that, that I think a lot of rappers and artists are still benefiting from today to the point where they're not, they're not even aware of it. Next, Lil Kim. For quite a while, some would say the queen of hip hop, uh, not only because of her very raunchy, direct and unique style, commercial success, too, uh, but also it was it was a weird time culturally where, for whatever reason, people couldn't seem to stomach more than one female rapper at a time. But, uh, you know, in a lot of respects, Lil' Kim was like the canary in the coal mine, kind of breaking that ground, pushing that envelope so that we could at least get to the point today and it took a while. <laughs> it took a freaking while um, for us to get to a place where we have this wealth of fantastic uh, women rapping right now who are totally killing it. And, and look, they've always been there. They've always been there. But the issue is, is that the, the industry hasn't always been willing to, you know, push them in, in a way where they would actually be successful and they, they would actually, you know, win. And uh, it, it seems like, um, you know, uh, we're, we're finally like making room for that. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Lil' Kim, I, I, you know, the, the things would certainly be different. Lil Wayne, I mean, in a lot of respects, for, you know, during his heyday, revolutionized pop rap, uh, multiple classics under his belt, uh, revolutionized, uh, you know, mixtape drops too. And obviously, you know, monster spitter, like one-liners galore. Some of which have gotten him in trouble over the years, but uh, you can't deny that the dude's mind goes in places that n nobody else's mind would go. 
And, um, you know, uh, regardless of how you feel about his, uh, his new stuff, um, his highlights are what his highlights are. And, you know, his impact is what it is. You know, it's undeniable. Um, Lupe Fiasco, one of the greatest rappers out of Chicago and uh, uh, one of the most talented high concept rappers out there. His discography isn't always super consistent, but when Lupe is on, Lupe is on and he is unmatched uh, by many. Uh, we also have MIA on the list, another great rapper out of the UK who uh, came through with some really amazing and unique crossovers, has had uh, quite a bit of commercial success, and uh, an artist who really marches uh, to the beat of her own drum. Um, you know, I would certainly say uh, was ahead of the curve in a lot of respects too, especially when you look at a record like Maya, for example. So uh, MIA, Huge respect to her. I think, uh, you know, she's mega underrated in the, you know, broader sense of the genre. You know, she did have her kind of moment in the limelight in the 2000s, but I think um, her significance, at least for me personally, um, should, uh, should last far beyond that. Uh, we have Missy Elliott, her solo stuff, uh, you know, what she also was able to accomplish with Timbaland over the years too, uh, is incredible, amazing, super unique voice and talent. And, uh, you know, really had a style and sound all her own that, uh, I, I think is more relevant today than it's ever been. Um, it's just a shame that people, many people don't really realize it because of, you know, sort of that point in time where she dropped off for a little bit, but hopefully, um, you know, zoomers kind of go back and appreciate you know, her, her older work and what she was able to contribute to, to hip hop music. MF Doom, a lot of people on this channel know and love MF Doom, multiple classics under his belt, super unique, influential style, influential to many young rappers that uh, are, uh, you know, more left field uh, today. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's just, uh, I don't know, you've heard me praise this guy numerous times. I don't think I need to do it any further. Uh, most deaf, uh, I think one of the best uh, conscious and more backpack type rappers, as people might used to refer to it, uh, of the 2000s. Uh, multiple classics under his belt, two black on both sides. Amazing. Um, I would also say a black star, obviously. Amazing. Great lyricist. Great storyteller, too. Um, you know, had some commercial success as well. Uh, Most Def is just a, a great artist that uh, deserves all the praise in the world. Nas. Nasty Nas. I think it's pretty uh, self-explanatory why he is on this list. The uh, catalog, the relevance, everything kind of speaks for itself. Uh, Nicki Minaj, you know, great talent, great style, um, obviously paved the way uh, for a lot of women rappers today in, in much the same way Lil Kim did. I, I mean, while the transition out of the Nicki era has, I, I think, been um, a little contentious, uh, to a degree. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, at the end of it, um, you know, Nikki is still coming out ahead in terms of, uh, uh, what she brings to the table lyrically and vocally, uh, what she brings to the table in terms of versatility and what she has brought to the table in terms of just like impact, you know, and, uh, commercial success too. So, um, ODB, old dirty bastard, uh, was weird in a way that we could not completely understand um, and, and even fully appreciate or even fully, you know, like distill in any way for, for years. You know, I, I think uh, ODB's impact or at least what he paved the way for was a little delayed because these days, like, you know, so many rappers out there are trying to be the weirdo. So many rappers out there are trying to be like, the, the unpredictable, unhinged kind of guy who's got something ridiculous or just like way too real to say. Um, the guy who's screaming his brains off. You know, that, that's all stuff that ODB was doing <laughs> during a time where, I mean, pe people, people, people fucked with it. People respected it, you know, because that, that Wu-Tang credibility for a time was strong. And, and ODB had good singles too. ODB did have good singles. But... Um, you know, he, he wasn't necessarily appreciated for his oddity as, as much as I think, you know, he, he uh, uh, at least should be in this day and age. Um, so, you know, ODB, certainly one of my favorite rappers and uh, 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 many reasons to put him on this list um, on top of that. Pharaoh Monch, incredible lyrical ability, mega talented, super technical, super flashy. Um, 
can get quite topical and thoughtful too on a track as well. One of the most commercially successful rappers, no, but when it comes to, you know, the more technical side of things, somebody who is well known, well respected, studied, and uh, and worshipped. Pusha T, one of the greatest coke rappers out there of all time. Clips, uh, his solo work too. A lot of people love that Daytona record. What he's successfully done with good music as well. Uh, top notch feature after top notch feature. One of the greatest diss tracks of all time as well. Uh, certainly the greatest diss track of the 2010s. This man can count as uh, one of his successes. Also, you, you have to consider, like, uh, would, would Pharrell, would the Neptunes be where they are if not for what they were able to, you know, kind of create um, uh, with, uh, with Push and with Clips at the time that they did, too. So, you know, uh, a lot of uh, throughways made in the genre uh, by Pusha T. So, you know, that can't be denied. Q-Tip, Tribe Called Quest, fantastic features across his discography, too. Um, I mean, Q-Tip is one of the most legendary voices in jazz rap ever. The multiple classics that he and Tribe put out over the years speak for themselves. Um, the impact he had on New York in general speaks for itself. Um, you know, no matter what uh, era of hip hop or sort of no matter what style or vibe you're into, you know, there's always some time for some Tribe. Moving on from there, uh, we have Queen Latifah. Very progressive and, uh, you know, forward thinking for an artist of... Her time, you know, I mean, her debut has a lot of fantastic tracks on it. Also, Black Rain is, I think, one of the better boom bap records of the 90s as well. What she was able to do, you know, during those first two decades, I think, is uh, totally respectable. Um, obviously, you know, she sort of drifted away from, uh, you know, music and sort of what she came into the music game with stylistically in many respects. And I don't know. I mean, I think that speaks to her multiple talents uh, going into, uh, the makeup game, going into acting and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, and, and, and it's great that she's been able to see the success that she has doing all of that. But her, her, you know, her early music career should certainly be remembered, too, because uh, there were a lot of great highlights within that. Raekwon, who I, I think is the, the last uh, Wu-Tang rapper we have in this list. Quite a bit of Wu-Tang representation. But, uh, I mean, you can't really deny Only Built for Cuban Links. You can't really deny how influential his contributions to Wu-Tang were. And, um, you know, dude has... Uh, classics and certainly a lot of influence when it comes to drug raps, mafioso rap, kingpin rap, which is still a super uh, relevant theme today. Fast forwarding to Griselda, who are thriving still today off a lot of the themes that, you know, Raekwon helped you know, make popular in his solo work. Rakim, Rakim, Eric B and Rakim some of the greatest hip hop records of the 80s. And uh, like Eric Sermon, who I was talking about earlier, I would say this applies even more so for him. Uh, somebody who was super significant to the genre while the blueprint in many respects was still being formed. Flow and rhythm, uh, which prior to his work were very rudimentary in the 80s, very rudimentary, you know, not in all cases, but pretty rudimentary. But Rakim had a smoothness and a rhythmic sensibility about him that instantly caught on and dictated a lot of what would come in the 90s, which eventually would obviously dictate would come in the 2000s and so on and so forth. Like you're talking about um, a significant DNA strand here creatively, which if taken away, the genre would look completely different. So Rakim huge respect and appreciation to obviously, uh, um, everything that he did over the years. Listen to paid in full ride, AKA MC ride death grips. I think one of the most significant and unique vocalists in hip hop ever boundary pushing. And, uh, I think one of the best creative runs of the 2010s too. So, uh, yeah, ride death grips, industrial hip hop, uh, how groundbreaking and influential that's proven to be uh, to the genre. Uh, I think there's uh, really uh, uh, no denying my reasoning behind uh, putting them on a list. If you're trying to appreciate, you know, all sects and sort of, you know, legs of the 
the genre kicking off the S's. We have Houston's own Scarface, one of the most topically focused and lyrically talented rappers to ever come out of the South. A guy who has classics in multiple decades, whether you're talking about his uh, late 80s work with the Ghetto Boys, his solo stuff in the 90s, even in the 2000s with The Fix. Um, Slick Rick, one of the greatest and most unique and eccentric rappers to ever come out of New York. Um, great storyteller too. Snoop Dogg, Snoop Doggy Dogg. I think uh, Snoop's influence, his style, his flow, his uh, everything is, uh, you know, making him worthy of a spot here for sure. T.I., one of the kings of the South. Would trap music even be what it is today without T.I.? Most likely no. And finally, Tyler, the creator, uh, the final name and the last uh, kind of modern name on the list as well. Uh, what Tyler's brought to the genre in terms of musical diversity, versatility, and the way that he's kind of revolutionized the ethos of the style too, with Odd Future and all the names and talent that came out of that as you know a collective, as a brand, as a philosophy too, um, I think has been super significant. You're talking so many connections kind of coming off of him. Um, you know, be that Earl, be that Frank Ocean, be that the internet, um, be that, you know, sort of like this new evolution of, of this online DIY ethos um, and, and how that's kind of uh, intersected with so many artsy and alternative scenes, skating scenes, too. I mean, culturally, what Tyler has been able to mix together with his music and with his brand has been really impressive. And, uh, uh, you know, while Tyler may not be the most technically proficient rapper out there, uh, he's certainly a talented songwriter. Uh, a talented musician and producer, uh, somebody who comes up with great ideas and concepts, and somebody who, uh, you know, has the talent to uh, bring a lot of different people and ideas and sounds together in a way that is uh, uh, cohesive and uh, just uh, just sensible. I've enjoyed the highs and the lows of his discography in retrospect and just kind of seeing him change and evolve. And um, yeah, again, I, this is the uh, last name on the list. Those are the 55 rappers. Uh, thank you for watching. I know this has been a long and a Big, big, big video, but, uh, you know, and, and it took me a little bit to get through all of the artists and all of my reasoning, but that that's the 55. That's the 55 for you. Uh, let me know what you thought about this list. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Who did I leave off of it? Oh my God, who should have been on it? Uh, and put your own list down below if you want to make a list of your top 10, top five, dead or alive, 55 greatest, whatever you want it to be. Let me know. All right. Anthony Fantano, greatest rappers forever.